When considering the coating of concrete, there are three important inspection checkpoints. These checkpoints include the moisture content of the concrete, the surface cleanliness being achieved and the roughness, and the thickness of the coating being applied. This video provides an overview of the first of those three, moisture assessments. Water or moisture is a vital component in the formation and curing of concrete. However, once the curing process is completed, residual moisture remaining can be detrimental to an applied coating film. As a result, there is a limit to the amount of moisture that can remain in the concrete before applying coatings. There are a number of instruments and techniques available for determining the presence of moisture in concrete floors and walls, providing both qualitative and quantitative results. The quantitative methods do not always measure the same attributes. The results are in different units and the conclusions that are derived from the various methods are often not in agreement. This video describes some of those methods, methods used for determining moisture content, available ASTM standards, and some of the problems the industry is facing in interpreting the results. The first, anhydrous calcium chloride. This method is addressed in ASTM F1869. This is a non-destructive test that requires exposing the concrete slab to anhydrous calcium chloride for a given length of time. The anhydrous calcium chloride is stored in a plastic container and is weighed to the nearest tenth of a gram before you expose it to the service environment and again after exposure to determine the increase in weight. The values are entered into a formula and the results are expressed as moisture vapor emission rate or MVER reported in pounds of moisture over 1,000 square foot area during a 24 hour period. Relative humidity probes. This method is addressed in ASTM F2170. This is a destructive test that requires drilling small holes in the slab, inserting hollow sleeves, and after a given waiting period, inserting probes into the sleeves to determine the relative humidity of the slab. The results are displayed directly as relative humidity with no conversions needed. Relative humidity above the floor is addressed in ASTM F2420. This is a non-destructive assessment of relative humidity immediately above the surface of the concrete. The test requires the use of a specially sized and insulated hood to create an air pocket immediately above the surface of the concrete. The relative humidity of the air within that pocket is measured by inserting a relative humidity probe through a lined access hole in the hood. The plastic sheet test is addressed in ASTM D4263. Although the standard was developed for uh, coating system preparation, it is also used in the flooring industry. This is a non-destructive test that requires firmly taping the perimeter of a sheet of plastic about 18 inches by 18 inches in size to the floor or wall and allowing it to remain in place for a minimum of 16 hours. At the end of the exposure period, the underside of the sheet and the surface of the concrete are visually examined for the presence of moisture. Moisture meters. There are a number of them. One is electrical impedance. The use of this meter is addressed in ASTM F2659. This is a non-destructive comparative test involving the use of an electronic moisture meter. It's used to measure the electrical impedance of the floor beneath the instrument. This method provides a quick way to obtain an approximation of the relative moisture content of the concrete. Another moisture meter is based on radio frequency. This instrument utilizes radio frequency to assess and monitor the relative moisture level in porous materials such as concrete. The instrument from one manufacturer provides readings on a relative scale from 0 to 999. The instrument displays the results using both a color and a number. Green or good is, is usually 0 to 145 units, which is safe air dry conditions. Yellow is between 146 and 230 units, signifying moisture levels are higher than normal but not critical. Further investigation is recommended. And red is greater than 230 units, representing excessive moisture levels. The levels and descriptions are specific to this particular manufacturer and they aren't based on industry standards. A third moisture meter is based on electrical resistance or conductivity to determine the moisture content. Two contact pins on the end of the instrument are pushed against the test surface to measure the conductivity of the material between the pins. 
One manufacturer recommends driving masonry nails into the surface about a quarter inch in depth and touching the probe to the head of the nails. Another alternative is to drill holes through the shell of CMU, for example, and insert the probes into the holes. A relative scale is used to determine moisture content. That is, specific moisture percentages are not provided. A combination of plastic sheet testing and instrument readings are described in ASTM F710. In this case, you take instrument readings in the test area before installing the plastic and then after removal and look for differences in moisture content. That's all there is to it. You can log on to ktauniversity.com for more information on measuring moisture, more information on concrete, and also for other training modules in this series.